have you ever had that horrible gassing and bloaty bloating feeling where like it looks like you're basically pregnant <laughs> it looks like you're six weeks pregnant and your belly's kind of like extended and round and hard and protruding and it's <laughs> it looks quite funny but yeah i used to experience that and i remember looking for like solutions diets remedies just about everything i think i nearly like scoured the whole of youtube <laughs> looking for various solutions because i remember like distinctly one game playing football <clears throat> and like i'd eat dinner maybe three hours before a football match i'd eat like a quote-unquote healthy vegan diet um you know i'd have like rice chickpeas things like that your pastas your breads things things of that nature and then i'd go play a football match and i'd run around like basically try not to like for want of a better word shit myself like <laughs> try not to uh you know let loose <laughs> and i'll just be running around like with a bit of discomfort now i was still pretty quick i was still able to perform quite well but it was like it was really annoying i was kind of having to play just play a bit restricted and it was an awful feeling i'm going to be giving you three of my best tips and three of the best things i did to uh, remove my bloating and just ease that digestive pain towards like the end of 2022 I found a solution. I found the raw vegan diet. And before a lot of people who haven't heard of it switch off and think it's something woo-woo, I was a bit hesitant to the idea at first, but I thought I'd give it a go. And basically it talked about things like mono meals. So that's just a meal of eating one thing at a time. And it talked about, and it talked about like food combining. So how different combinations of carbohydrates fats and proteins how they mix together or how they don't mix now there's plenty more videos on my channel going more in depth on each specific topic but in a nutshell i drastically increased my fruit intake and i just became aware of my food combinations because things like chickpeas chickpeas and rice you've got rice which is a starch and then you've got chickpeas, which are quite high in protein and difficult for the body to break down. And that combination, it, it doesn't do well. Now, there's certain things you can do to chickpeas, like you can sprout them. But it's still not really a food made for man. And when I, when I delved into the realm of like raw veganism, and like I began learning about food combining, I began to realise that like, fat and carbohydrates that's one of the worst combinations ever but so many people have like pasta and cheese now cheese is predominantly fat and then pasta is nearly like pure carbohydrate now i'm not r personally recommending pasta anymore but if you're going to have pasta at least keep it a high carbohydrate meal and don't mix it with fat because when you combine it with fat it just affects your digestion because you've got you've got to have two digestive processes going on at the same time and the body doesn't like that fat takes far longer to break down than carbs and then you've just got a, a mess in your stomach and it doesn't know what to do with it so yeah like a typical day of eating now for me is, is for most people pretty weird but it'll just be like mainly fruit and it will just be fruit on its own because fruit digests best on its own so it might be like a big banana smoothie it might be like a big date smoothie. It might be just a simple meal of mangoes, maybe with one other fruit. And it's just, I keep it really simple. And that digests so much better. Like now, even like, you know, I, I will talk about this because it's important. Like even when I go to the toilet, like if I'm fully raw and I can buy my food properly, it's like effortless. It's like 30 seconds and it's odorless. So it's, it's pretty amazing. That's how you know, that's what we're designed to eat. But yeah, plenty more videos on the channel, which you can check out after this video if you want more like in-depth uh, knowledge and tips on how to actually do a raw vegan diet successfully. And the second tip is to do with water and like drinking in and around meals and with your meals. So previously I used to, I used to drink basically whenever, like I'd have a drink with my meal. So like, because I was eating such dry foods as well, I'd like have have my curry, I'd be thirsty, and then halfway through I'd just sip some water and think nothing of it. But for your body, that's that's a digestive nightmare. Like 
it, it dilutes the hydrochloric acid in your stomach. So it just weakens that and then it makes digestion a lot harder. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a bit of a dry throat because it's early in the morning. Yeah, I've got to definitely still stay hydrated because the body needs water. But at the end of the day, it's very important like when you drink, if you if you want the best digestive health, that is. So it's best best practices, I'd say, is just to sip water. Don't like guzzle it because the body can't deal with a lot of water at once. It just kind of floods the system. But if you if you sip water and then give it I like to wait at least 20 minutes, but probably half an hour is optimal before your meals, before you drink. And you want to make sure you want to make sure you're actually not feeling thirsty before meals. So it's like a delicate balance because you, you don't want to be thirsty, but you want you want to make sure you give it enough time. So try drink half an hour, 20 minutes at the latest before your meals. And then after you've eaten, especially a big meal, I like to wait at least an hour, hour and a half before drinking. Obviously, if you're really thirsty, then just have a little sip here and there. But all of this kind of dilutes the hydrochloric acid once again in the stomach, which is like what we use to digest food. And you don't want that. You want a nice, strong stomach that can actually digest things. So just be just be mindful of your water intake. That's something I previously never, never even considered. But yeah, drinking with your meal, like I used to, big no-no, but that's something that helped me as well. Finally, also relating to food, I cut out things like irritants for the body, things like chili, ganyan, ganyan? <laughs> ganyan, onion. I cut out chili, onion, garlic, all of these things, even though they're promoted often as like health foods, like, oh, they're natural antibacterial, antimicrobial. That's because they actually kill all life within the body and they irritate the body like an antibiotic kills good and bad bacteria um we want the good bacteria as well. bacteria as well <laughs> just nearly swallowed a fly <laughs> um yeah so i cut them out and i noticed great improvement because basically what they do is they stimulate like a mucus response in the body so maybe like itching or or especially with chili, like for me, when you don't have it and then you have it, you really notice it. So it actually irritates the body. And you may think it's like beneficial, but when you cut these foods out, you realize just how they kind of irritate the body. Like I can just think of countless times where I'd have like chili and curries and things like that. Like completely vegan curries, pretty low fat curries. But like, you know, we all know what happens the next day after a curry. <laughs> no more has to be said. But yeah, these foods are often promoted, but the more you dive into it and research these topics, the more you realise that every nationality and ethnicity and culture has these foods that are staples or used in a lot of cooking and supposedly healthy, but they're not actually anywhere near as healthy as promoted. And the best way to do it is just to experience this firsthand, just to, just to try it out for yourself. But yeah, since cutting them out, also digestion has been perfect. And also an added benefit is like, my breath doesn't smell. Like that's a huge bonus because anything that makes your breath smell in the morning, to me, that's an instant no-no to eat. Like when you eat a pure clean diet, like I, like I said in the first point, you know, everything sorts itself out. Like you don't have body odor, you don't have bad breath, digestion's perfect. That's how for me, I know it's like the quote unquote ideal diet for man. Yeah, I'm just going to fire off a few more quick tips that I can think of. So right off the bat, as I said, you don't want to feel like thirsty before a meal. So obviously it's important to give it enough time before the meal, but make sure you're not feeling thirsty before a meal. Because if you're feeling thirsty, you're probably not going to have enough water to like optimally digest the food. So the body still needs water for basically all its processes. We're like around 70% water. So it's so important. But just give it enough time. But at the same time, you don't want to feel thirsty. And then also you want to chew your food slowly and just really savour it. That's something I was massively guilty of, especially when I was younger. Like I just wanted to get back on my PlayStation <laughs> and I'd just come in for dinner, scram it down in about 10, 15 minutes and then leave. But you really want to chew your food. That's how, you di uh, that's how the enzymes in your saliva mix with the food. And, you know, actually 
like digest your food before it enters like the the digestive system because the the mouth is where digestion starts and that's a huge change i had to make i had to become mindful it took don't get me wrong it took time it took time you're never gonna um fully like savor every meal there's gonna be times when you're in a rush but yeah i think just becoming more mindful mindful of that and just taking your time when you eat that improves your digestion digestion massively and you're not taking in all this air as well like because when you eat fast you usually eat with your mouth open you're like <laughs> <laughs> i apologize for having having to uh, see that but <laughs> yeah you're just taking in a lot of air you're, you're just gulping it down in chunks and it's a lot harder for your digestive system finally just linking onto that it's just eating in a rush and eating while stressed like if you're stressed digestion is going to be a nightmare and sometimes we don't even realize like we're stressed we're just kind of eating maybe comfort eating or eating while we're watching like a stressful tv show or program or yeah just eating on the go or eating in not the best state of mind and unfortunately the body doesn't do too well when it's in fight or flight and it's also trying to rest and digest so if we can just like try to calm ourselves down or wait a minute or just like eat in an actual pleasant environment i think we'll find food digests a lot better as well and it has for me as well not that i was ever like really stressy but i've noticed like the handful of times where i've not been in the best uh, mental state and i eat it's just like a nightmare for digestion and if you've stuck around this far and you'd like to know some of the meals and recipes i eat on a daily basis that take about five minutes to make because i don't mess about in the kitchen yeah if you'd like to know these kind of recipes and meals then in the top link of the description you can get access to them for free if you join my new school community where i'm building a tribe of like-minded individuals uh, there's a bit more on the about page of the community but if you go in there you can get access to all the resources for free and it's going to be a nice place for people to network and uh, meet up with some of you guys and you can interact with me a bit more in there if you want so yeah hope you enjoyed the video have a nice day Peace and love.